Good morning, and welcome to Morning Prayer for Thursday of the 13th week in Ordinary Time, July 2nd, 2020. I'm Deacon Dennis Holly from Sacred Heart Catholic Church, Richmond, Virginia. Before we begin, let's take a moment to recognize that we're in the presence of God. Let us begin as we begin all our prayers in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Awake, lyre and harp. With praise, let us awake the dawn. Our first psalm is Psalm 57, entitled, Morning Prayer in Affliction. Have mercy on me, God, have mercy, for in you my soul has taken refuge. In the shadow of your wings I take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I call to God the Most High, to God who has always been my help. May he send from heaven and save me and shame those who assail me. May God send his truth and his love. My soul lies down among lions who would devour the sons of men. Their teeth are spears and arrows, their tongue a sharpened sword. O God, arise above the heavens, may your glory shine on earth. They laid a snare for my steps, my soul was bowed down. They dug a pit in my path, but it fell in it themselves. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing, I will sing your praise. Awake, my soul, awake, lyre and harp. I will awake the dawn. I will thank you, Lord, among the peoples, among the nations, I will praise you, for your love reaches to the heavens and your truth to the skies. O oh God, rise above the heavens, may your glory shine on earth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, send your mercy and your truth to rescue us from the snares of the devil. And we will praise you among the peoples and proclaim you to the nations, happy to be known as companions of your Son. Awake, lyre and harp. With praise, let us awake the dawn. My people, says the Lord, will be filled with my blessings. Our canticle is taken from Jeremiah, entitled, The Happiness of a People Who Have Been Redeemed. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations. Proclaim it on distant coasts and say, He who scattered Israel now gathers them together. He guards them as a shepherd his flock. The Lord shall ransom Jacob. He shall redeem him from the hand of his conqueror. Shouting, they shall mount the heights of Zion. They shall come streaming to the Lord's blessings. The grain, the wine, and the oil, the sheep, and the oxen, they themselves shall be like watered gardens, never again shall they languish. Then the virgins shall make merry and dance, and young men and old as well. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console and gladden them after their sorrows. I will lavish choice portions upon the priests, and my, my people be filled with my blessings, says the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. My people, says the Lord, will be filled with my blessings. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. Our next psalm is Psalm 48, Thanksgiving for the People's Deliverance. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain rises in beauty, the joy of all the earth. Mount Zion, true pole of the earth, the great king city, God in the midst of its citadels has shown himself its stronghold. For the kings assembled together, together they advanced. They saw at once they were astounded, dismayed, they fled in fear. A trembling seized them there, like the pangs of birth. By the east wind you have been destroyed, the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so we have seen in the city of our God, in the city of the Lord of hosts, which God upholds forever. O God, 
we ponder your love within your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches to the ends of the earth. With justice your right hand is filled. Mount Zion rejoices. The people of Judah rejoice at the sight of your judgments. Walk through Zion, walk all around it, count the number of its towers, review all its ramparts, examine its castles, that you may tell the next generation that such is our God, our God forever and always. It is he who leads us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Father, the body of your risen Son is the temple not made by human hands and the defending walls of the new Jerusalem. May this holy city, built of living stones, shine with spiritual radiance and witness to your greatness in the sight of all nations. The Lord is great and worthy to be praised in the city of our God. Our reading this morning is taken from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, the heavens are my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house can you build for me? What is it to be my resting place? My hand made all these things when all of them came to be, says the Lord. This is the one whom I approve, the lowly and afflicted man who trembles at my word. Blessed among us today is a canonist writer by the name of Hostvitha Hast of Gandersheim, and she was born approximately 935 and died in approximately 1002. Though her work has received little attention, and obscurity attends most of her life, Hostvitha of Gandersheim was undoubtedly one of the remarkable women of her age. Concerning the details of her origins, or even the spelling of her name, there is no consensus. She evidently received extraordinary education and at some point entered the Abbey of Gandersheim, not as a nun, but as a canoness, taking vows of obedience and chastity. There she was encouraged to write and quickly won renown for her literary talents. Writing in Latin, Hosk, Vitha composed many volumes of allegorical poetry and moral dramas, often dealing with themes of conversion, the struggle against temptation, martyrdom, and the challenge of Christian discipleship. Many of her plays were set in the time of Roman persecution, featuring strong female heroines who challenged the rulers and the culture of their time to affirm their own identity in Christ. Though her writing was admired, many doubted that such works could be composed by a member of the weaker gender. Hasvitha proudly affirmed her own talents, which were gifts of God. This is a quote of hers. Scorn he should not render at the writer's weaker gender, who these small lines had sung with a woman's untutored tongue, but rather should he praise the Lord's celestial grace. Our responsory, from the depths of my heart I cry to you, hear me, O Lord. From the depths of my heart I cry to you, hear me, O Lord. I will do what you desire, hear me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From the depths of my heart I cry to you, hear me, O Lord. Let us serve the Lord in holiness, and he will save us from our enemies. Our Canticle of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to repair his way, 
to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us serve the Lord in holiness, and he will save us from our enemies. The response to our intercessions this morning is, Let us walk in the light of your face, O God. Gracious God, you are the hope of our salvation. In trust we pray. Let us walk in the light of your face, O God. Let us lead us to the wellspring of your gospel and animate us by your Holy Spirit. In trust we pray. Let us walk in the light of your face, O God. Receive our praise for the wonders of creation and make us good stewards of all your gifts. In trust we pray. Let us walk in the light of your face, O God. Heal those who suffer from shame or trauma and restore trust in their hearts. In trust we pray. Let us walk in the light of your face, O God. For Sacred Heart Catholic Church, for our priest, deacons, deacon candidates, our ministers, for our parish staff, for all those who volunteer, those who provide their time, talent, and treasures, for our parishioners, and especially those of our parishioners who are sick, who are passed away. In trust we pray, let us walk in the light of your face, O God. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Our prayer amid our COVID epidemic. epidemic. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with a virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality medical care. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or who have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. May they know your peace as they work together to achieve it on earth. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, Jesus Christ, stay with us as we endure and mourn, persist and prepare in place of our anxiety. Give us your peace. Jesus Christ, heal us. All-powerful and ever-living God, at morning, noon, and evening, we pray, cast out from our hearts the darkness of sin and bring us to the light of your truth, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. May God show us kindness and make haste to help us in time of trouble through Jesus, our brother. And may the Lord bless us and protect us from all evil 
and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Have a blessed day. Please take care of yourself and each other, and may God be praised.